From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Lisa Laporte. The United Nations says it's fired nine staff members from its Agency for Palestinian Refugees over their possible involvement in Hamas-led attacks on Israel last October. UNRWA didn't say what roles they played in the attacks, only that the nine included seven people who were previously fired after an internal investigation found they may have been involved. Residents of BC's Central Interior downstream stream from a major landslide are being told to leave their homes immediately as water has started flowing through it. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in Alberta today for a briefing on the status of the Jasper wildfire. He met with Alberta Premier Danielle Smith, who told reporters afterward that both governments will need to work together on temporary housing for the town of Jasper, which lost a third of its buildings to the fire last month. Not only is that going to be important for the residents who lost their homes, but also the seasonal workers, and on top of that, all the workforce that is going to be needed to help rebuild. More than 20,000 people were evacuated from the town and from Jasper National Park nearly two weeks ago. They have yet to return. Labour Minister Stephen McKinnon was set to meet this morning with leaders from Canada's two main railways and Teamsters Canada Rail Conference Union to talk about the consequences for the economy and supply chain of a looming strike hanging over the rail industry. Canada's Labour Tribunal is expected to release a decision this Friday about whether a strike would jeopardize Canada's health and safety. Preparations are underway in Georgia as Tropical Storm Debbie slams neighboring Florida with high winds and heavy rain. The chairman of Chatham County says they're imposing a curfew in anticipation of a potentially devastating impact. It's to get folks out of the way of what you've never seen before. All right, This type of rain hovering over us, coming with the intensity that they tell us that it's coming, Uh, it's going to catch a whole lot of people by surprise. So we're trying to make decisions that will help you to be safe. The storm made landfall on the Gulf Coast of Florida early today as a Category 1 hurricane before weakening to a tropical storm. And Google has lost a historic antitrust case in the U.S. A federal judge in Washington ruled that Google's search engine has been illegally exploiting its dominance to squash competition and stifle innovation. The seismic decision could shake up the internet and hobble one of the world's best-known companies. Google and its parent, Alphabet Inc., argued that its popularity stems from consumers' overwhelming preference for the search engine, which currently processes an estimated 8.5 billion queries per day worldwide. Google almost certainly will appeal the decision. The case may eventually land in the U.S. Supreme Court. Norman Hall, Washington. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, Canada's medal streak at the Paris Games is over after the women's three-on-three basketball team lost 16-13 to to the U.S. in the bronze medal game. The Canadian Olympic team was trying to stretch its medal streak to a record 10 days. Swimmer Summer McIntosh will return to Canada as the first ever Canadian to win three gold medals at a single Olympics. She also won silver in the Olympic pool in Paris and says she can't wait to return home. I'm excited to get back to Canada and see all my friends and family and just I can't thank all of my supporters enough whether they are my friends or family or if they're teammates or staff or acquaintances or complete strangers or just fellow Canadians in general it means the world to have their support and I, having their support has really pushed us as a as a swim team to reach what we did in in this past games. Canada finished fourth in the women's 4x100 meter medley relay, denying McIntosh a fifth medal at the Games. From the Canadian Press, I'm Lisa Laporte. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the CanadianPressNews.ca.